Today I'm going to show you how to spool up braided line on this catfish reel. Uh, spooling braided line is actually pretty similar to spooling monofilament line, but there's a couple of important considerations that you should know about if you haven't spooled braided line before. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and show you the process from start to finish. The first thing I usually do is go ahead and thread the line down through the eyes on the rod. Um, you don't have to do that. You can always thread the line up through them later but I find it easier to crank the line onto the reel if you do that. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and attach the line to the reel. Now here's where um, there's something a little different about braided line. If I were to just spool the braided line onto here the same way I do monofilament, um, I could get myself into a problem um, when I'm reeling a fish in. Uh, what can happen is, um, since braided line doesn't grip the, the spool as good as monofilament does, um, when a fish is pulling on it, or maybe even if you're pulling on a snag or something, this whole, this whole spooled mass of line can actually um, turn on the spool and, and basically make it impossible to reel the fish in. And so typically when you put braided line on, you want to do something to eliminate the possibility of that happening. Um, there's a couple different ways to handle it. Uh, some um, anglers go ahead and, and spool on mono line. Um, a few wraps and once the spool is covered with mono line then they go ahead and tie on the braided line and spool that onto the reel. Another technique that seems to work fine that I've used though is to just take a piece of masking tape and put it all the way around on the spool and that makes the spool grip the line a little better and I've uh, pulled it off snags and I pulled in decent sized fish and never had any trouble with it when I do it that way. I'll just wrap this around here and then I'm going to go ahead and um, get this line tied on. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is, is make a knot right near the end of the line. And if you don't get it real close to the end, you probably want to go ahead and snip the end off, which I'll do here. Then I'm going to go ahead and flip the bale open and I'm going to wrap the line around the reel. <clears throat> now where the line uh, meets here, I'm going to go ahead and um, tie a overhand knot um, using the tag end um, and tie that knot around the main line. I'll try to show you up close here in a minute. Okay. Here hopefully you can see what I've done. Um, the line comes in here, goes around the reel, then I have an overhand knot tied here, and I have that other knot tied um, right at the end, at the tag end, okay? So now I'm going to go ahead and tie, pull the overhand knot tight, and then I'm going to go ahead and pull the spool, or the, or the loop that I have around the spool, I'm going to go ahead and pull that tight. Now what will happen if you kind of pull and work it back and forth, that knot, that overhand knot, is going to slip. That's going to slip clear back until it meets that that knot that you put right at the end. And that will keep it from slipping any further and this will just draw itself tight um, around the spool. Now here's another important consideration when you're spooling braid onto your reel. You got to be sure that this is tight. You can't leave a lot of slack here when you're winding this up. If you do that this, uh, the, the line is loosely wrapped around the, around the spool of the reel and when you get a fish pulling or if you're pulling the line in or pulling it off a snag a lot of times the line, the outside um, loops of the line will actually embed themselves in the line below on the spool and what happens then everything seems okay but, but when you go to cast it out again uh, you'll find that the line doesn't come off the spool freely because the upper layers are essentially buried uh, below so the way you avoid that is just to make sure that you have plenty of tension on it when you reel it in. And it actually uh, works the best if you can just have someone else provide some tension on this and so everything gets wrapped tightly. I'm letting Landry crank the line onto the reel uh, since it's actually his um, rod and reel that he's going to be using for catfishing this summer. What I'm doing is put a little tension on the spool, that way it doesn't turn very easily and it keeps this line tight. And that way as he's cranking, that line is tight on that spool and won't cause us any trouble later. Once you have plenty of line on your reel, um, you can go ahead and cut it off, put your tackle on and you're ready to go fishing.